hello guys welcome back to my channel today we are here with another american history video this one says like the origins of american girl culture so in the comments somebody told me that there are more than 600 million guns in the u.s like distributed among the population i don't know if i believe that because i don't know how he came to those stats and that's crazy to imagine like 600 million guns owned by only the the population like the layman you have countries that don't have as much like as many guns as the, the the american population do but yeah before we start do not forget to leave a like comment on our channel cynics and please subscribe to the channel for more content let's get into it if you look at all the maps of the spanish empire you can find you will notice that the spaniards claimed far more land than they actually had claims that were sometimes outright ridiculous costly and completely unenforceable However, in North America, not only did they claim more than they actually had, but being that they were the first to colonize the American continents, one has to wonder why they failed at enforcing all their claims. Claims that stretched from Alabama... Wait, Louisiana was Spanish? Louisiana is not America, though, because I've heard that Louisiana was French. I didn't know about Louisiana Spanish to Minnesota, to Alaska, and even to Hawaii, over a total of what are today 27 U.S. states. Guns and property is the short answer. The Spanish came to the New World to conquer existing societies, build new societies, and mold it all into their global empire. Unlike the Dutch, British, and French, who mainly had financial interests, the Spanish idea of empire had more in common with how the Romans built empire. They wished to export the Spanish way of life, assimilate conquered people into their society, and enforce a Spanish social structure upon their subjects. And part of Spanish colonial life was that the colonials were strictly forbidden from owning firearms. Colonial subjects didn't own firearms or even... I mean, it makes sense for them to not allow people to, to, to own guns. I don't think the British either allowed like, the Native Americans to own guns, or the French did allow... Uh, like in in French Canada, those people to own guns, I don't think they did. It was like if you give them guns, they are uh, they're going to be able to revolt. But if you don't give them guns and you have all the power, you control everything even property, but were mostly day laborers on plantations and mining complexes owned by corporate interests like the Basque Guipuscuan Trading Company. When Spain came to the New World, it encountered large native kingdoms such as the Aztecs, so Spain brought an army and conquered them. But when the Spaniards encountered nomadic native nations in places like Chile, Texas, Venezuela, and New Mexico, they ran into trouble. You Wait, Texas was Spanish before? can conquer Tenochtitlan, but how do you conquer a constantly moving group of peoples not dependent on one particular spot of land? The Spaniards... But like, Texas is one of the biggest uh, states of the United States, I think. And that, was, that wasn't like British before. I, I didn't need, like watch a video about how the, 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 all the, court, the, the states came to be just one country. The Spaniards encountered the same nomadic warfare that bested the Romans, Russians, and Chinese before them. And since they banned their citizens... Hold on, the Chinese also had tried to conquer America? Like, I thought the Chinese were poor at the time. What? ...from owning firearms, the only way a semblance of security could be established was by an expensive military presence. In short, it was only safe to live where the Spanish crown stationed troops. Elsewhere, well, not so much. Caracas was burned down by a native war band when it was ungarrisoned by the Spanish army. The Spaniards fought an almost 300-year-long war with the Apaches, Suma, and Mansu throughout northern Mexico, Texas, Nevada, and New Mexico. And Nevada, that's where Las Vegas is, right? All of that was for the Spanish Empire before the, the British took it? Unlike the wars we know from popular culture involving the Americans from much later, the Spaniards lost. Ranches were burnt to the ground, mines destroyed, and entire towns pillaged and burnt. The Spanish army was hopelessly lost in this vast region, perfect for ambushes and hit-and-run attacks. Spanish settlers were barred from owning any firearms or form militias to defend themselves. Whatever expedition pushed further north and to the east didn't fare any better. Spanish expeditions sent to explore and settle Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi just disappeared. And presumably... Ah, oh, okay, okay. They didn't get it to Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi. Okay. ...because they were wiped out by the Cherokee. 
then in the 1600s, the Spaniards started executing Pueblo shamans for sorcery and witchcraft. The Pueblo, who were a settled people, rebelled and kicked the Spaniards out of Santa Fe and the Rio Grande Valley, restricting Spanish activity to southern Texas and California from then on. California too? Don't tell me this is why Los Angeles is called Los Angeles. It's because the, the Spanish had it before the, the, the British did. Because Los Angeles, like, that's uh, Los Angeles, that's Spanish. The Spanish colonial social order didn't allow for a successful settling of this area as it was unequipped to conquer and assimilate nomadic natives or patrol the vast lands. The British had a completely different colonial policy. They explicitly encouraged their colonial subjects to own firearms. More than that, they handed out the land they had taken from the natives to settlers. And that land, aka property, is the reason why most of these settlers came in the first place. Europe was a mess of large landowners, serfdom, high grain taxes and famines. Political rights, if existent at all, were also tied to how much property a person owned. Having a plot of land that was your own was a prospect irresistible to many. And irresistible to the British crown was what these settlers would do on that property. Buy slaves, grow cash crops, sell them to British trading companies and thereby increase the wealth of the empire. And the British also allowed the means of defending that property. The settlers would be personally invested in their colonial property and thereby the colonial economy. The British would profit, not have to spend money on an expensive large standing army, could invest in a large navy to bully others, and the armed colonials would take care of the French, natives and Spaniards because they weren't just protecting the empire, but their own property. The mistake the British made in the end was assuming that this colonial strategy wouldn't backfire. The colonial policy of handing out the land and permitting the ownership of guns for settlers is one the British practiced in every colony they settled, which is why all these countries have less constraining laws on private gun ownership to this day, except for those who in modern days introduced gun control laws. The United States, however, is different from the other colonies. Guns and the gun culture that developed became tied to property. The reason one owned a gun was to protect what was yours or what you had taken from others. It became essential to the promise of the country to those who came to it, but also part of its darkest chapters. As much as you may read or hear of the American gun culture as something tied to a violent history, racism, hunting, frontier life or other, and as much as you might hear debates by legal scholars and politicians theorize the modern and past meanings of the Second Amendment, the truth of the matter is that this country's gun culture developed out of and goes hand in hand with the promise of owning your own property and being permitted to defend what is yours. And that is... I mean, I can I can vouch behind that because like your property is your property. Imagine like even now, if somebody breaks into your house, if you say, okay, I don't have a gun, I don't have anything to protect myself, I'll have to wait for the police to come. Like, if you if you pay attention, even movies, like, the police only, like, they come, by the time they get there, like, the the bad that is going to get done is already, like, the bad has already been done, like, the evil has already been done. So, if you cannot protect yourself, your family, your property, then I don't know what to tell you is a powerful drive that is hard to break. German and French gun culture revolved around having guns to kill each other. Polish gun culture revolves around being prepared for invasion. Same with Swiss. Are you sure that the French and the Germans are going just to kill each other? Are you sure about that? gun culture. And as Europe increasingly became a more peaceful place, these gun cultures and with them the ownership of guns eroded or were drastically changed and reinvented. The United States have barely enacted any regulations to limit ownership of firearms even when a sizable amount of the population used said firearms in an armed insurrection to keep slavery legal. If the Americans didn't... Oh really? Did they really do that? Like to war against the government when the government said like slavery is over? the heck restrict firearms ownership after they were used in an attempt to keep slavery legal i doubt they will do so now after massacres and increased gun crime there is however one thing that is steadily undermining the united states gun culture and might eventually be its undoing something that is largely unnoticed in the modern gun debate ownership of private property is on the decline 
And with the American gun culture being so deeply tied to property rights, what is most likely to in the end change the legal landscape on firearms in the United States is the change of American society itself from property owners into indebted rent-paying day laborers. No problem, that was nice, that was a good video because I didn't know about like the, the, the British, I didn't know that they allowed the people to own guns. I thought like, once you go come and colonize and land, like you regulate the guns and everything. That's probably why like the, the American Revolution was able to succeed because they had the guns and everything. That's probably why. But yeah, that is it for today's video. I've learned something new, but interestingly enough, like they didn't discuss about how many guns are owned by the population because like those people in the comments are saying 600 million I think somebody even said 1 billion guns is owned by the population and I don't know if I believe that but yeah if you still here please don't forget to leave a like comment on our channel next and subscribe to the channel for more content until next time peace out